We will discuss the blood supply of the brain and the spinal cord. When you talk about the blood supply of the brain, the brain is supplied by two arterial systems that is the carotid system and the vertebral system. The carotid system consists of two internal carotid arteries and we call it the anterior circulation. The vertebral system consists of the two vertebral arteries and we call it the posterior circulation. So the two arterial, uh, uh, arterial branches come in on either side and supply the brain and the spinal cord. Now the two vertebral arteries and the two carotid arteries are branches uh, from lots of branches. They come into the subarachnoid space and branch out an anastomose and give rise to what we call the circle of willis. Right? So generally when we talk about the blood supply of the brain we usually uh, remember the circle of willis. Now here you can see a diagram where the uh, carotid arteries as well as the vertebral arteries are shown and how they enter the intracranial cavity is shown. When you do dissections you will be able to see how, how the arteries enter the cranial cavity. Now again here you have a very diagrammatic representation of the two circulations. The two branches which are direct branches from the aorta and the main branches of the aorta and they come in and supply the cranial cavity right so you can see the vertebral arteries the two vertebral arteries and the two uh, internal carotid arteries both shown in the same diagram where they originate as well is shown here now this is the inferior aspect of the cerebral cerebrum and the cerebellum as well and you can see that the arterial circles are there in the subarachnoid space very closely adherent and attached to the inferior surface of the brain and you can see how these two bra two arteries come together and they form the circle of willis and branch out and supplies the whole of the cerebrum and the cerebellum and going downwards uh, the spinal cord. Now again here this diagram we will use this to discuss the different branches of the circle of willis. Now here you can see all the branches are given in a very clear diagrammatic manner. Okay, So you can trace out these arteries and try to understand the circle of willis. So first we will discuss about the anterior circulation. It is formed by the internal carotid arteries and the branches. So you have several branches in this. You have the ophthalmic artery, the posterior communicating artery, the choroidal arteries, the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. Now the ophthalmic artery, the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery are the most important of the branches. Right. So posterior communicating artery is the one that completes the circle of willis but sometimes it may be absent. Of course the ophthalmic artery is important because that is the only source of blood to the orbit and the eye. Let's talk about the anterior cerebral artery which is one of the major branches. So here you can see how it starts and it is a terminal branch. right? So it runs forwards on and medially uh, superior or above the optic nerve and in the longitudinal fissure of the cerebrum it is joined by the uh, cerebral artery of the opposite side okay and then the two arteries are sometimes connected by what we call the anterior communicating artery so this also goes to form the circle of willis uh, make it, making it a continuation okay so the two anterior cerebral arteries uh, move forwards move anteriorly parallel to each other and they are joined by the anterior communicating artery and then uh, these anterior cerebral arteries they curve backwards over the corpus callosum right and they and uh, as they go back posteriorly they will anastomose with branches from the posterior cerebral artery as well right so that happens in the 
medial surface of the cerebrum and then the anterior cerebral artery supplies the medial surface of the cerebral cortex right as far back as the parieto occipital sulcus right so up to the optic uh, the occipital lobe it supplies all of the medial surface right and it also supplies a strip about one inch strip of uh, cerebral cortex at the uh, superior surface okay and this is called what we call the precentral gyrus area then it also supplies the lentiform and the chordate nucleus those are the internal nuclei and also the internal capsule parts of the internal capsule right so anterior cerebral artery has a large supply so most important thing to remember is that the medial surface of the cerebral hemispheres are supplied by the anterior cerebral artery then we come to one of the other larger branches which is the middle cerebral artery right this is the largest branch and it runs laterally in the lateral sulcus okay and then it has lots of small cortical branches which supplies the entire lateral surface of the lateral superior superior lateral surface of the cerebral hemispheres except for the small narrow strip that we talked about which is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery okay then up to the occipital pole occipital lobe is supplied by the posterior one right uh, infralateral surface of the hemispheres which are supplied by the posterior cerebral artery so expect except for those things everything else the entire lateral uh, superior lateral surface uh, except for what is mentioned is supplied by the middle cerebral artery okay so uh, it basically supplies all the motor and sensory areas except for the leg and the genital areas which are supplied by the anterior cerebral right uh, and also again it has small uh, central branches which go into the substance and supply lentiform and caudate nucleus and also parts of the internal capsule right so the anterior cerebral and the middle cerebral are the largest branches that supply cortical structures in in the circle of villis in the anterior circulation right so remember the middle cerebral artery is the one that supplies a major part of the cerebral cortex okay so it supplies whole of the lateral surface of the brain except for the occipital lobe and a tiny part uh, on the superior uh, surface of the brain Okay, then moving on to the posterior circulation as I said it's formed by the vertebral arteries which pass upwards forwards and medially on the medulla oblongata right and at the lower border of the pons the two vertebral arteries join to form the basilar artery okay and the basilar artery continues upwards forming the posterior circulation now the posterior and the anterior circulation may be joined together by the posterior communicating artery now here again you can see this shows you the uh, posterior circulation quite clearly how it lies on the pons and the medulla and the different branches which arise from it then the posterior cerebral artery uh, it curves laterally and backwards around the midbrain and it is joined by the posterior communicating branch of the internal carotid artery which joins the two circulations together it has cortical branches which supply the infralateral and medial surfaces of the temporal lobe okay and the lateral and the medial surfaces of the occipital lobe and the visual cortex right so the posterior cerebral artery supplies the visual cortex which we see in the occipital lobe then there may be central branches which pierce the brain substance and go in into the in internal nuclei and they supply the parts of the thalamus 
the lentiform nucleus, midbrain, pineal gland again, and the medial geniculate bodies. Right? So, all three arteries actually, the anterior, middle, and the posterior, supply deep structures within the brain substance. Then it also has choroidal branches which enter the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle and supply the choroid plexus. Then the vertebral arteries form the basal artery and the basal artery also has several branches, the uh, anterior inferior cerebral arteries, the superior cerebral artery, the posterior cerebral artery, the pontine arteries and of course the labyrinthine artery. Now talking about the anterior inferior cerebral artery, now I have circled it in this picture it po passes posteriorly and laterally and supplies the anterior and inferior part of the cerebellum. Few branches are given to the pons and the upper part of the medulla. Okay? So, uh, this also can lead to some syndrome. If the anterior inferior cerebellar artery is blocked, you can get a syndrome. Uh, if you can read up on this and uh, tell me what are the features of this syndrome. The superior cerebellar artery, it arises close to the termination of the basal artery and goes around the cerebral peduncle. Okay? And it supplies the superior surface of the cerebellum, the pons, pineal gland and the superior medullary volume. And I have circled it here. You can see where it arises as the, as the basal artery ends. Then again you find small branches, some are pontine branches, right, they are tiny vessels which enter the substance of the pons and supply it and as I said the labyrinthine artery, it is a long narrow artery which goes with the facial and the vestibular cochlear nerves uh, into the internal, in through the internal ac acoustic meters and supplies the ear, okay. So it can arise as a branch of the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Now what are the branches that are given off by the vertebral artery? It is the uh, anterior spinal artery which supplies the spinal cord, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery which we call the pica and there may be other small branches. Talking further about the anterior spinal artery, it is formed by uh, there is a contribution from both vertebral arteries, branches from both vertebral arteries and it descends on the anterior surface of the medulla oblongata and then continues on to the anterior surface of the spinal cord, right. It is embedded in the pia meter and it goes, travels along the 
anterior median fissure. Now we discussed the structure of the spinal cord, so you should be able to visualize this. Then talking about the posterior inferior cerebellar artery or the PICA as we said, it is one of the largest branches and it pa passes on an irregular course right between the medulla and the cerebellum and it supply, supplies the inferior surface of the vermis, the central nucleus of the cerebellum, the uh, inferior surface of the cerebellar hemispheres, the medulla and the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle right. So the posterior inferior cerebellar artery supplies a large area uh, which is very important lot of important nuclei and structures are there because it supplies actually the cerebellum and the medulla. Now the small branches, the meningeal branches, they supply the bone and the dura mater and, uh, of the posterior cranial fossa. And then the posterior spinal artery can also arise from the vertebral arteries or they may arise pr from the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Okay, and then it will go down uh, on the posterior surface of the spinal cord and supply the spinal cord. Then you have small medullary arteries, the branches are distributed to the medulla. Okay, so talking about the circle of Willis, whenever we say the cerebral circulation, you always think of the circle of Willis, right? So this is actually it lies in the interpeduncular fossa at the base of the brain and the following arteries contribute to it. Okay? So the anterior communicating artery, the anterior cerebral artery, the internal carotid artery, the posterior communicating artery, the posterior cerebral artery and the basilar artery. Right? So all of these form the circle of Willis and this allows blood to enter in either from the internal carotid or the vertebral and distribute to any part of the cerebral hemispheres okay so cortical and central branches arise from the cir circle and supply all the substance so this is there as a protective mechanism so even if one artery gets blocked a slow blockage will uh, allow the circle of willis to supply that particular uh, cortical area right so unless there's a massive block in one of the larger branches which occurs very acutely uh, chronic blockages can be dealt with because of the circle of Willis. So there may be variations in the size of the arteries forming the circle and this may lead to some people being more uh, susceptible to um, uh, brain infarctions. So uh, the absence of the posterior communicating artery one or both has also been reported right. So the anatomy of the circle of Willis and these cerebral arteries are hugely variable right so we are discussing uh, the uh, most common uh, variant okay so this is how uh, I mean it is actually uh, when you say circle of willis it has to be in a circle right however when we say circle of willis we generally talk about all the arteries that are there however this is the, in ma the areas marked in yellow only form the real circle okay so that blood supply actually even if one side is blocked uh, the other side can actually supply the whole of the brain at least at up to some point okay so as i said there are lots of variations in the circle of willis here you can see some of them don't have posterior uh, uh, the artery which connects it posterior communicating artery some don't have anterior communicating like that lots of differences are there and variations are there so if you dissect the brain you will be able to see these variations okay so this is a angiogram right to so show the cerebral circulation and you can see the branches uh, this is actually a normal one okay so I think I discussed this again as we went but just to summarize the blood supply of the deep cortical structures so the putamen caudate nucleus globus pallidus all that from the middle cerebral artery then the thalamus by the posterior cerebral artery then the internal capsule is supplied by the 
uh, anterior cerebral, middle cerebral and anterior choroidal arteries. Right? So, internal cap capsule blood supply is very important because you can get lots of uh, infarcts happening here, lots of uh, clots blocking the arteries which supply the internal capsule and because lots of the nerve fibers, the tracks grow through the internal capsule, uh, blood, re reduction in blood supply of that site will cause a lot of clinical symptoms. Okay, so you here you can see the lenticular striate arteries, these are branches of the middle cerebral artery and anterior cerebral artery and they supply the internal capsule and the basal ganglia and these are end arteries. Okay, so if even a tiny blockage occurs in one of these lenticular striate arteries, then basically that area of the brain becomes uh, hypoxic. Okay, it does not get enough. Um, so you can have a cerebrovascular um, accident or a CVA if this happens, right? So this is important because these tiny, tiny infarcts can occur due to blockages in the lenticular striate arteries, right? So this diagram actually shows you the branches and the structures which are supplied. Here again, a similar diagram to show you the middle cerebral artery and the lenticular striate branches which go and pierce into the cerebral uh, hemispheres, right, into the, the neural tissues and supply the deep structures as well as the internal capsule. Okay, so here again you can see the anterior cerebral artery territory, the middle cerebral artery territory, posterior cerebral artery and also the branches from each of these that supply the deep structures of the brain, right. So, do not forget that all those structures are also supplied by the same vessels. If most of the time we talk about only the cerebral hemispheres, but we need to remember these because you can get different cl clinical syndromes due to infarcts in these particular branches. Okay, so he, again here these diagrams I have put so that you get a idea about how the internal structures are supplied, right? Without just thinking about only the cerebral hemispheres, you need to remember that the deep structures are also supplied by the same branches and blockages in those branches can give rise to different clinical pictures. Okay, so again another similar uh, section, you can study this uh, slowly and see the different territories and if they are blocked, what can happen? Now another thing to remember is the cortical areas which are supplied by the three major branches, right? So the anterior cerebral artery supplies the medial aspect of the brain. Because of that, uh, it supplies the sensory and motor areas of the lower limb. Okay. And then it also supplies the supplementary motor area. Okay. It is marked in this diagram below in red. Right? The purple and blue uh, show you the motor and the sensory corti cor cortices right, of the lower limb. And then the prefrontal cortex which is also marked in this diagram. Okay? And those things are all supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. Okay? So the prefrontal cortex is uh, involved in... Um, higher functions such as motivation, planning, organization, things like that. Okay, so what will happen if the anterior cerebral artery gets occluded? Okay, so uh, if it happens proximal to the anterior communicating artery, then the collateral circulations will be adequate to preserve the circulation and you may not find any clinical symptoms. However, if the occlusion occurs distal to the anterior communicating artery, then you will get contralateral hemiparesis, that paralysis of one side of the body opposite to the block, hemisensory loss, loss of sensation on that same side, uh, sorry, uh, on the opposite side, right, contralateral hemiparesis and hemisensory loss. So if the block is on the right, you will see the symptoms on the left, okay. Uh, that is because of the paracentral lobule of the cortex. Uh, the, the medial aspect of the cerebral hemispheres. Then 
inability to identify objects correctly, apathy, and personality changes due to the uh, frontal prefrontal cortex, as we discussed, and also parts of the parietal lobe. Okay, then cortical area supplied by the middle cerebral artery, which is the sensory and motor areas of the head, arm, and trunk, large area, right? And also Broca speech area, ver Wernicke speech area, right? And the lenticular striate arteries, which supply the deep structures like the globus pallidus, putamen, caudate nucleus, genu, and the internal capsule. Right? So, the lateral, superior lateral surface of the brain, most of it is supplied by the middle cerebral. So, the large number of cortical areas are supplied by the middle cerebral artery. Right? So, a major block in the middle cerebral artery will give rise to many different, uh, many clinical features. Right? So, speech will be completely affected and according to the level, you will have different features. So here again another diagram to show you all the areas that may be affected by the blockages of the, the three major branches. Then if the middle cerebral artery gets occluded what will happen? You have a contralateral hemiparesis and hemisensory loss involving the face and the arm right of the opposite side. So if the right sided artery is blocked the left side will be affected contralateral okay and then because of the speech areas you will have aphasia uh, that is of course if the left hemisphere is affected right so if the left hemisphere is affected you will get aphasia otherwise you won't get any speech problems because the other other side will compensate then cortical area supplied by the posterior cerebral artery which is the occipital lobe sensory and interpretation of all the visual inputs right so anything to do with sight it is the occipital lobe the visual cortex okay and then the splenium or the other posterior aspect of the corpus callosum the commissural fibers uh, between the two uh, uh, visual cortices all that will be supplied by the posterior cerebral artery right and of course also the thalamus right so the thalamus is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery so, major blockages will have a lot to do with the sensory inputs, right, because the thalamus has the uh, relay stations of the sensory inputs. Okay, so posterior cerebral artery occlusion will give rise to what we call contralateral homonemous hemianopia, right, homonemous hemianopia and visual agnosia, that is the ischemia to the left occipital lobe if the left occipital lobe is affected only we will get that because there's a dominance then impairment of memory right can also happen due to uh, parts of the temporal lobe being <coughs> affected right posterior cerebral artery occlusion okay so remember this picture this is where the uh, you have the uh, what you call the homunculus, right, medial aspect of the brain supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. If it is blocked, you will get the lower limb being affected, okay. Then middle cerebral artery, you will get the upper limb, face and the uh, neck structures like the larynx, pharynx, all that affected, okay. So, if you have this picture in your mind, you should be able to deal with all the clinical anatomy questions. then going on to the blood supply of the cerebellum the cerebellum is supplied by the superior cerebellar anterior inferior cerebellar posterior inferior cerebellar arteries right so they are given these uh, the, the, the shortened forms right we talked about pica because the posterior inferior cerebellar artery which is the largest branch right so these branches will supply the whole of the cerebellum Okay, so here you can see how the basal artery gives off the branches and they cross again the cerebral peduncles 
and supply the whole of the cerebellum. This again shows you the territories, so we don't really consider this that much, but these are the territories of the cerebral hemisphere, cerebellar hemispheres, right? So when we talk about territories, we generally talk about the cerebrum, right? But the cerebellum also has similar territories supplied by the three major branches. Okay, then blood supply of the brain stem is important because blockages of these will give rise to uh, cranial nerve uh, problems and they may appear like uh, different clinical pictures may seem like some sort of a tumor, right? Uh, however, it will be a occlusion. So, occlusions in the brain stem can give rise to different pictures, right? So, uh, the midbrain is supplied by the posterior cerebral, superior cerebellar and basal arteries, the pons by the basal artery mainly, anterior inferior and superior cerebellar, okay? And the medulla oblongata by the vertebral, anterior and posterior spinal and the posterior inferior cerebellar and the basal arteries, right? So, if you just look at this, you see that whatever artery goes close to to this uh, the, to the brain stem uh, before it goes into the uh, cerebral hemispheres will supply that area okay so the main supply of the pons is by the basal artery main supply of the midbrain by the posterior cerebral main supply of the uh, medulla by the vertebral artery branches right otherwise other branches will also give some supply Okay, so this is again uh, the territories, the different territories. Now it is uh, good to remember a little bit about this because you can see different clinical syndromes named after these arteries, right? Like the Pica syndrome, which will be in this class. There are other syndromes as well, right? So you don't have to know all these syndromes, but one or two common ones you should be able to remember. Okay, so the Pica syndrome or the lateral medullary syndrome or Wallenberg syndrome as it's called is occlusion of the posterior inferior cerebellar artery which causes lateral side of the, uh, uh, the, the medulla to get uh, reduced blood supply and all the functions to be lost. So what are the effects of this blockages of the pica is you get sensory deficit of the trunk right trunk and the limbs on the opposite side to the infarction okay then you get loss of pain and temperature sensations again on the opposite side of the body then sensory deficits affecting the face and the cranial nerves of the same side right so this is very particular when you see this you know that this is below the internal capsule below the cerebral hemispheres because the this is before the crossings Okay, so when you learn about the, uh, the uh, tracks, you will uh, understand this more, right? I am just talking about blood supply and telling you what defects can arise. So, uh, you will see uh, one-sided sensory and motor loss in the trunk and limbs and the opposite side being in the face, right? Uh, sorry, uh, when, when you have the infarct on the right side, the right face will be affected right and the left li upper limb trunk and lower limb will be affected that is how you see it when the lesions are in the uh, brain stem right okay right so then the clinical symptoms will be clinical symptoms will be difficulty in swallowing because of the uh, the uh, the cranial nerves which are affected slurred speech again cranial nerves facial pain vertigo Horner syndrome and uh, myoclonus of the palate right so all of these uh, different clinical features can be explained by looking at the structures which are there in the lateral aspect of the medulla right so when you learn the the the, the brain stem right and the when you learn the brain stem and the uh, the tracks you will understand this better right so we, after finishing learning those go back to the pica syndrome and study it it's actually very 
very uh, nicely explained with the anatomical basis. Okay, then a little bit about the venous drainage of the brain. The veins of the brain, they do not have any muscular tissues, right? They are very thin walled, right? No smooth muscle and they do not have any valves and they lie in the subarachnoid space. Uh, they pierce the arachnoid mater and the meningeal layers uh, and then drain into the central venous sinuses, right? So here you see the central venous sinuses and the different branches which are coming and draining into them, right? Okay, then briefly the blood supply of the spinal cord. As I <coughs> said, there are two posterior spinal artery, one anterior spinal artery which arise from the vertebral artery. And then there may be segmental and uh, radicular artery branches arising from the aorta, right? So from the vertebral arteries, from the cerebral circulation downwards, you get branches which supply the uh, uh, spinal cord as well as from the aorta, you get branches segmentally along the vertebral column coming and supplying the spinal cord. Then you get the posterior spinal arteries as I said, they arise either directly from the vertebral arteries in the cranial cavity or the posterior inferior cerebral artery and they descend down on the posterior surface of the spinal cord uh, and uh, close to the posterior nerve roots and they give off branches which enter the substance of the cord and supply it. Okay, so the posterior one third of the spinal cord is supplied by the posterior spinal arteries. Okay, and the first three thoracic segments are said to be vulnerable to ischemia. Right, the first three thoracic segments. Then the anterior spinal artery it is by two branches which come from the vertebral two vertebral arteries within the cranial cavity and it descends down in the anterior on the anterior surface of the spinal cord on the anterior median fissure right and it supplies the anterior two thirds of the spinal cord right here the fourth thoracic and the first lumbar segments are liable to ischemia right if they, they get blocked Okay, so cross sections will show you that the posterior spinal arteries they supply the posterior one third and the anterior spinal artery uh, and the different radicular arteries which come from the aorta supply the anterior anterior two thirds of the spinal cord. So this diagram actually is more clearer. You can see the area which is supplied by the posterior spinal artery and the area which is supplied by the anterior spinal artery, right? So blockages of each of these will give rise to different pictures, right? So when you learn about the uh, spinal tracts, you can try to identify the different features that might occur if these arteries are blocked. Okay, so here you can see the aorta giving the segmental branches and you can see the vertebral arteries, uh, the anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal arteries coming down, going inside the vertebral canal and supplying the spinal cord. So going on to spinal artery occlusion. So if you get posterior spinal artery occlusion, one of the posterior spinal arteries, it will result in lots of proprioception and two point discrimination in the affected segments only on one side. Okay. And uh, however, if you get uh, occlusion of the anterior spinal artery because there's only one and also because it supplies a large area, uh, you will get um, loss of sensory and motor functions bilaterally. Right. Uh, in the affected segments with preserved proprioception, right? So that is because the lateral and the anterior columns both will be uh, ischemic, okay? So spinal, uh, posterior spinal artery occlusion and anterior spinal artery occlusion, clinical pictures will be different because of that, because of the different um, ascending and descending tracks that will be affected.
Okay.